friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's S'more the Merrier. So I've stamped my images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting over on the left with my little hedgehog, and I'm using E50, E51, and E53 for his body. I laid in a little shadow on his muzzle and along the back side of his body where it meets the quills and the underside of his arms with that E53. And then I'm blending that out with the E51. And then I'll add a nice highlight on the front of his face and belly with that E50. I also want to use these colors to do the white of the fox. I'm going to skip the E53 because I feel like that one's a little bit dark, but I'm going to jump right in with the E51 and add a little shading there on his lower face and also on his tail, and I'll blend that out with the E50. And I'm also going to do the marshmallows with just the E50, adding a little bit of shading to them so that they still look nice and white. I'm also going to do the one that's on the stick and the one that's in the s'more. I also did the cut ends of the log with the E53 and E51. And then I'm going to switch to some darker browns. I'm going to use E55. E57 and E59, and I'm going to do my little hedgehog's quills, starting with the E55 and just doing a little flicking motion following the way that the quills are drawn, and then I'm going to come in with the E57 and repeat that process, just layering those little flicks of color right over top of the E55. And then I'll darken that up even further by going in with the E59. And I'm making sure to hold my marker pretty much straight up and down and use very light pressure. I'm just barely touching the paper to give me those really fine lines. Then I'm going to take those colors and do the rest of the logs and put that E59 down on the underside. I wanted the top to have the highlight because that's where the fire is, so it would be casting some light on there. So I'm blending up with the E57, but I'm saving about a third of that space for the lightest shade, the E55. I'm also going to color the branch that the marshmallow is on, starting with that E59. Just put that darkest color on the, uh, the top because that would be the part that is away from the fire. And then put the lightest shade on the underside. And then I'm going to color the graham cracker part of my s'more with E53 and E55. I put the E55 on the outer edges and then blended out the center with the E53. And then I brought in my E57 once again because I wanted to toast up my marshmallows a bit, both the one on the s'more and also the one on the stick. So I started with a little bit of E57 down in the corner, and for the one on the stick, I'm going to do it on the bottom. And then I'm blending out with the E55. I'm kind of doing little dots so that it's broken up and not like a nice smooth line, so it looks a little bit more realistic. And then I did add E51 to just blend that all in. Then I'm going to move on to the chocolate bar and I'm using E44, E47, and E49. I really like these shades for chocolate, especially dark chocolate, which is what I'm doing here because they have a little bit of like a gray tone to them that just makes them look really nice and earthy. So I did the centers with the E49 and the E47 and then the outer part with the E44. And I'm also going to do the melted chocolate on the s'more with those same shades. I also wanted to darken up the hedgehog's quills with that E49. So I threw a touch of that in there as well, just to give it a little bit more dimension. And then I'm gonna move on to my fox. 
For him, I'm going to go with my favorite combo for foxes, which is YR12, YR14, and YR18. I'm using that YR18 to create some shadow on the back of his head and a little bit on his muzzle and then the lower part of his body as well around his haunches and a little bit on the underside of his belly. And then I'm going to begin to blend that out with the YR14, skipping over his tail for now because I um, just wanted to do them one at a time. So I'll use the YR12 for my lightest to fill in the rest of the orange area on his face and his little belly. And then I will go in and do the tail. I'm going to start with that YR18 again and add some darkness on the underside and also where it is attached to his body. And then blending up with the YR14 and then the YR12. And I went a teeny bit out of the lines on the underside of his tail, so I just grabbed my colorless blender and pushed that color back over the line. And then I'm going to do the fire. For the orange part of the fire, I wanted it to be a different orange than the fox. I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. So I went with YR04, YR07, and YR09. So that was for the middle part of the fire. For the center part, I'm gonna do that red with R24 and R29. And I'm also going to add in R39 and do the wrapper on the chocolate bar. Like I said, I'm doing a dark chocolate. And usually dark chocolate has a red wrapper, or very often it does anyway, and then the milk chocolate has blue. So I went ahead and colored that in. And then for the rest of the wrapper, I wanted that to be silver. So I used W3 and W5. And I realized I needed a third shade in there because it was a little dark. So I went ahead and grabbed the W1 to finish up that. Just to give it that little tin foil look. And then I'm going to go back and finish the outer part of my fire in yellow. And I did Y13, Y15, and Y17. So for each of those parts, I put the darkest color at the bottom part of the fire and then blended up with the lighter uh, mid-tone and the highlight shades. While I have these colors out, I'm also going to do the cross diagonal label on the graham cracker box. So I put the Y17 in both corners and then I'm blending toward the center with the Y15 and then the Y13. And I'm also going to color my moon yellow, but I wanted it to be a bit lighter. So I'm going to bring in the Y11. So I'll use the Y13 and the Y11 for that and throw in a touch of the colorless blender to soften up the white part. The rest of the graham cracker box I wanted to be dark blue, so I picked B34, B37, and B39, and again I'm just doing the corners with the darkest shade, that B39, and then also just highlighting the parts where it's folded on the top, and then I'm going to blend out with the B37, and then I'll fill in the rest with the B34. There is quite a bit of difference between that B37 and the B34. You can see that the B34 really pushed back the B37. So I did go back and add a few extra flicks of color with the B37 to just blend that out a little bit better. And then I'm going to do the marshmallow bag with B quadruple zero for the part that I want to be white. Just adding a little shading on that. And then I'll use B41 and B45 for the label on that. I added the B45 down toward the bottom, and then I'm blending out with the B41. And once I was done with that, I grabbed my black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and went over the eyes of my critters to make them nice and bright and shiny again. 
And then I accidentally smeared a little bit of that black on the hedgehog's face. So I grabbed my mono sand eraser and just removed that. And then I took a white gel pen and added a few little dash lines into the hedgehog's quills again, just to make them look even more kind of lifted up and separated. And then I realized I forgot to do some rosy cheeks on my critters and color in the inside of the hedgehog's ears and the fox's ears. So I went back and did that with R11 and R20. And then I trimmed these images out with their matching dyes. For my background, I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I'm going to start by creating a glow in the center by using some Mustard Seed Distress Oxide ink. And I'm just swirling that in a large circle in the center of that panel. And then I'm going to bring in Speckled Egg and kind of bridge the gap from the glow into the night sky. So I'm just kind of softening the edge of that fire light by going around it with that speckled egg, kind of creating a little bit of a hazy, smoky look maybe. And I'm just mainly focusing on the top and sides of the fire because the bottom is going to be completely covered up. I did go back to the mustard seed to just uh, add a little bit more of that so it didn't get lost in there. And now I'm going to come in with some blueprint sketch and bring that in from the top and the two top corners as well. So I want to really darken up the sky and make it look like nighttime. So I'm just taking that up into the speckled egg. And I will kind of eliminate most of that speckled egg by the time I get done with that background. But I wanted there to be a little bit of that in there because I felt like if I went with the blueprint sketch into the um, mustard seed, it would create kind of like a green look, which I didn't want. Next, I'm going to bring in some chipped sapphire and really darken up the edges of that sky. I want it to be really nice and bold and clear that it is nighttime. So I'm gonna layer that on pretty heavily. And I wanna bring it pretty far in as well because a lot of this background is going to get covered up uh, by the frame that I'll be adding onto the scene. So I want to have a bit of that darker color in there that's showing. So I'm gonna work my way back and forth now until I have a look that I'm happy with. And then I wanted to add some stars in the sky. So I'm gonna grab my starry color paints and I'm gonna cover up the main yellow part of that firelight because I don't want the stars to be in the fire. And I'm gonna take this kind of paler gold shade here and pick that up with a paintbrush. I added a bit of water to make that nice and fluid. And I'm gonna tap that all over my background so I get some nice gold stars. And I think these look so super pretty when you tip this panel into the light, it just really brings them to life. So I'm gonna set that aside to dry. And now I have trimmed down another piece of Bristol with the grassy dye in the Lawn Fawn Mushroom Border. I'm going to color that with some Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink. I wanted this grass to look pretty dark because it is a nighttime scene, but I didn't wanna just do black. I wanted there to be more color, and especially around that campfire, you know, that would be casting a glow and uh, hopefully creating a little bit of color in the scene so everything doesn't look completely grayed out. I'm darkening the top of the grass with some pine needles and then I will go back to my Lucky Clover and blend out that transition area. And I'm gonna end up trimming this little piece down too so I didn't need to fill in all of that grass. And I did go back and add just whatever was on the blending tool with the chipped sapphire to give it an even darker edge. So now I'm going to take the forest backdrop and die cut that out of some black licorice cardstock from Lawn Fawn. I'm gonna pop out that centerpiece and I'm gonna save that because I'm gonna use a little bit of that later on, but there is the rest of that die cut. 
and I'm going to use some Barely Art Precision Glue to attach this. This is a new glue to me. I asked you guys recently to recommend a glue with a precision tip, and this was one of the two that was uh, overwhelmingly suggested, so I decided to try it out. So I attached my grassy border to my sky and then just trimmed off everything that I didn't need. It didn't have to be perfect because it's going to be behind this forest backdrop. So I've added some Scotch 3M foam tape to the back of that, making sure that it was really well supported. The only place I didn't put it was behind the smaller trees because I wasn't sure if I was going to remove those from the scene yet or not. I thought about cutting them out and just having the larger one, but in the end I did leave them in. So I did pop a little piece of foam tape underneath later on. From that center die piece that I cut out, I'm going to do my sentiment and I'm going to heat emboss that. So I'm going to add a little bit of my EK Success powder tool down here and smear that around so that I get a nice uh, crisp image and I don't have a bunch of flyaway um, embossing powder. And I'm using my Twiddler's Nook Pressure Pal to make sure I get a nice even pressure on those stamps that I am stamping with Versamark ink. Then I'm gonna coat them with some white embossing powder until they're really good and coated. And then I'm gonna tap off any excess from the back and bring my heat tool to that so that I can melt it. I like to heat them up from the back first and then bring it to the front and that just helps eliminate some warping. I was burning my fingers so I grabbed my reverse tweezers and held on to that paper with those and was able to finish my embossing. Then I created an insert for my card using a piece of white cardstock that I trimmed down with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. And I'm stamping on that with some Lawn Fawn Blue Jay ink. And I'm doing the Everything is More Fun with You and the Little Owl from that set. And I felt like the owl was a little darker than the sentiment, so I stamped up just the sentiment one more time and got a really nice impression. And then I wanted to add the little s'more into his wing there, so... I just added that separately so it would look like it was attached and then I could stamp that down again to make that look like, you know, one little piece there. I buffed off my heat emboss sentiment with a microfiber cloth and trimmed that out with an everyday sentiment banner from Lawn Fawn. I did this just to get the top and bottom even. I'm going to trim that down even further in just a minute. But first I'm going to go ahead and add that insert to the inside of my card. I'm using another piece of black licorice cardstock for my card base. And that is a standard A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. And then I'm going to glue my focal panel right on top of that. So I just made sure that that was on there nice and straight and even with all four edges. And then I can bring in my images and begin to add those. I'm going to start with the central one, which is the campfire. And I'm going to add that right in the middle of that glow that I created with the mustard seed distress oxide ink. So I'm going to attach that and then I'll have my fox. I just want to make sure I have enough room for that stick so that it's over the fire, but not kind of, you know, too close. So I'm going to pick up that tallest tree and kind of nestle my fox back in there. And then I'll add a bit of glue onto that stick and stick that in his hand so it looks like he's holding it. And next I'm going to do the hedgehog. I'm going to put him on the other side of that campfire. Then I wanted to add all of my food elements down on the bottom edge. So I put a tiny piece of foam tape in the top corner of that marshmallow bag so that it would uh, be nice and level and then uh, liquid glue on the rest. And I did the same for the graham cracker box. And I put those on either side of that open space at the bottom of that frame. And then I'm going to have a couple of marshmallows spilling out of the bag. 
And I wasn't sure where I wanted that third marshmallow, so I decided to save that for a little bit. I was going to put something in the hedgehog's hand, either the s'more or the chocolate bar, but it felt like there was too much of an empty space down at the bottom, so I changed my mind and added that chocolate bar down there, kind of tilting it a little bit to take up more of that space, and then I put the made s'more right in front of that. And again, I just added a tiny bit of foam tape to the top edge of that so it would be nice and level. And then I decided to add that third marshmallow on the other side of the graham cracker box. Before I add the moon, I wanted to make sure I had my sentiment placed just right. So I trimmed that down using my Cutter B scissors uh, just till I had two little strips there. And then I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of those and kind of put them at a little bit of an angle to fill in the top part of that sky. And uh, put Let's Toast to Your Birthday. And then finally I've got that little moon and I'm going to add that over on the left hand side. As a finishing touch, I wanted to add a little bit of stardust stickles to complete my little starry sky up there. So I put some on the moon and a little bit on each section of the fire. And I also did it on the three plain marshmallows and the one in the center of the marshmallow bag. Just a little touch to add a bit of sparkle here and there and I'm gonna just leave it at that. I didn't wanna go overboard. So I'll lift that up so you can see how that catches the light and also that gold shimmer paint. And there is another peek at the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had so much fun playing with these products. If you're interested in picking them up for yourself, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. If you did like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. And in case you'd like to keep watching, I've put up two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I also have tons of playlists that you can check out. So thank you guys. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.